at the time of recording, today is January 12th, 2023, at about 6pm. I can't read. Not gonna lie, probably agree with me if this year's been kinda, eh, so far. Now, if you've been living under a rock, I guess I should catch you up to speed. There have been <laughs> zombie outbreaks all over Eastern Europe sorts of stuff. But through all the trials we've been through so far and are to come, that does not mean that you can't have a little bit of fun and joy in your life. How do you get that joy? Thank you be asking. Well, have you ever heard of garden gnomes? With me being the gnome enthusiast I am, I wanted to give you, the people, consumers of gnome technology, my preferences of gnomes out there. So if you are interested in any garden gnomes to brighten up your life as uh, your home is just absolutely devastated by the onslaught of the outside world currently, pay close attention. Starting at the bottom of my list, my absolute least favorite of the gnomes has got to be the duo Gnomeo and Julia. I remember seeing the movie when I was like probably four. I was like very confused, possibly disturbed. They, I don't know, this is, uh, they don't look like fun. I mean, if you've ever read like the original Romeo and Juliet, you know how Romeo and Juliet ends. Yeah, so at number nine, we have this staring gnome. It's kind of scary, but, um, Number eight is this really sad gnome. I mean, it, it's not a poorly made gnome. It, it's, it, it, it's well made, but I mean, why is he so sad? Why is this gnome like... Who hurt him? Who hurt this gnome? Number seven is this Doofenshmirtz gnome. Now, Dr. Doofenshmirtz from the, the television series Phineas and Ferb. Interesting, fascinating character. You know, he's probably got more depth than any character in fiction. Though, I must say, in gnome rankings, He's not that good of a gnome. But basically, end of the line is Doofy Schwartz. It's a gnome, kind of lame, sorry. Number six, we have this eBay gnome. So I found this gnome on eBay, and uh, I mean, I mean, he's all right, he's, he's fine. I mean, he's got this like little like gargoyle on his like hat. I mean, it does remind me of this one time that like, like my cousin, like, had this like squirrel on his head and he didn't notice for like three and a half hours. Then once he did, like he started to freak out and like Five is Boris the Gnome. Now you might recognize this guy if you're funny. I mean, he's just kind of uninteresting. Number four. Hyperrealistic gnome. This gnome, I mean. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, like, up there. He's, like, really well-made, detailed. In fact, I think he's probably even real. I mean, he's... He looks very stoic, realistic, as the name implies. Definitely not my number one, but, like, it's not bad. World devouring gnome. This gnome... Okay. This gnome makes me laugh. Okay. Not like laugh at him, but laugh with him. Like he looks like he's like laughing really big. He's got that like big grin on his face. Like he's just happy about something. He probably just ate like a big sandwich and is having the time of his life. And that's, you know, I think the kind of energy we need to bring to our gardens. Number two, Joker now. Joker, he's a gnome. What else can he ask for? 
he really does kind of make me think a lot about our society, film society. It's like a piece of fine art, you know? Just like irreplaceable, it's one kind forever, that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about. Honorable mention. The gnome from Valve titles such as Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and the Left 4 Dead series. This gnome. I mean, he's just iconic. His design, everything. If I could kiss this gnome, I would. Number one is my uncle, Dave. He's a picture of him now. Love you, Dave. Look at me!